Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to look at the depth map extension. And if you want to keep watching after automatic 11, 11, we will try to see if we can use this depth map in DaVinci Resolve. So hang on in there. So if you go over to this URL, Stable Diffusion Web UI Depth Map Script, this is the extension we're going to be installing today. And if you open up your Automatic 11.11, you click on Extensions, head over to the Available tab, load from this URL, and search for Depth Map. This is the extension you need to install. Uh, it makes sure it's from Thigate. That's the link over here that I showed you here. This is the Thigate uh, GitHub page. So go ahead, install that. Once it's installed, you can apply and restart. When you've restarted your Automatic 11.11, you'll have this tab at the top here for Depth Map. And what we're going to do is, I've already prepared an image, but you're welcome to use your text to image or image to image and drop an image over here. So if we drop an image here, we have some options we can play with. Um, for now, I want to just look at the actual depth maps. So they have different models here. They have the Res01, some My Diaz, and some Zoe. So if we click Res01 and generate the depth map, you'll see that we have a depth depth map with that model. But if we try another one, 2.1, and we click generate, see we get a different depth map. If we try Zoe depths, taking a little bit longer. Well, while that's going, I've actually done a comparison over here with, all, with a few of these death maps. So if I bring in this picture, you can see what Res01 looks like, the Midas, Zoe depth. I'm not an expert at this, but in from what I can tell, it looks like the indoor and the Res01 give the best results. Um, and oh, in, the NK is not too bad either for this particular image, so, but not always good for some other images. So stick with the Res01 for, for your depth map. Okay, so if we go back to Res01, now let's look at what other options we have on this extension. We can generate stereoscopic images, but you're going to need some 2D glasses or some equipment in order to view that. But let's generate one anyway and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to do left to right and click generate. Okay, so if we look at that image, this is what it looks like. I have image on the left, image on the right, and they're meant to be offset, but you'll need some, some glasses or some uh, additional software to, to view this in a 3D way. All right, so that's stereoscopic. Uh, normal maps, we'll skip that for now, but let's actually take a depth map generate a 3D inpatent mesh and then we'll generate a, a zoom video from that. So this will take a little bit of time but you click this generate 3D inpatent mesh. Make sure that this is unticked otherwise it just takes quite a bit longer. 
and then go ahead and click generate. So I'll pause the video while that's going, but just before I pause, there is one thing I think quite funny. It says, yeah, generate in paint mesh, go make some coffee. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and do that. Pause the video and go make some coffee. Bam, the generation is done. And what that has given us is this J file and stored it in the extra or outputs extra images death map um, 0005 OBG file, OBJ file. So that's pre populated this tech box for us. And now with this generate video tab, we can do some zoom effects. So if I wanted 240 frames at 24 frames per second and set this to 4 and then let's leave the defaults and see what it gives us so click generate video okay the video is ready if we play that back you can see it is slowly zooming in based on this translation. So it's moving on the x-axis, not on the y, but a little bit on the z-axis. So that's not bad. Uh, if we, if we want to zoom in and then zoom back out, we can try a different translation. So I just want to do one zoom in and we can circle through that let's see what this video gives us and for this demonstration I'm just gonna also add the dolly zoom which kind of affects the the background and pushes it away from us and let's generate that video okay that video generation is done it's much quicker once the OBJ file is generated generating new videos is, is fairly quick so let's take a look at that one. Okay, we zoomed in much further and now we zoom back back out. And I think it does pretty well. So that's the demonstration I wanted to show you everyone for the depth map extension. In the next part of this video, I'm gonna take us to DaVinci Resolve and see how we can use this depth map. Now, one big caveat here, I have not used DaVinci Resolve for a very long time, so I'm by no means an expert, and I'm going to struggle through this a little bit, so hopefully you can have a good laugh at how I try to use this depth map in DaVinci Resolve. Alright, so I'm sure there's lots of different ways to do this, and there's many terms, 3D terms, depth maps, parallax maps. I might use the wrong terms, so I apologize up front, um, but hopefully you'll get to see one such example where a depth map might be useful. So here I have DaVinci Resolve, project's been open, I don't have a timeline, so let's go ahead and just create a new timeline. Okay, so we have a timeline, and I'm going to be using Fusion for this. Okay, so what I do here is I need to add a new fusion clip. Okay, I can't find how to add a new fusion clip in the way I had before. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this on here. This is our image. Right click and say a new fusion clip. Once we have that, we can go over to the fusion tab here. And we have our media out and our media in. So let's rename this so we can at least identify what it is. So this is the the, the bar. Okay, and we want to do a 3D scene. Okay, so let's just remove that for a second. Let's say so this is a 2D image, and we will need a 3D image plane, so we can take this 2D image, put it on a 3D image plane, 
And if I push the one on my keyboard, that's what it looks like here in the 3D space. And then I need a way to connect this to the, I need to connect it to the to the output. Okay, so to do that, uh, we need a merge node. Okay, so this is a merge 3D node. And then I need a render 3D, so I can take 3D space back to 2D. So let's connect all this up. Okay, so if I select this media out and I push 2 on my keyboard, it toggles this right side. And if I leave the, the render 3D and I push 1 on my keyboard, it toggles the left side. But render 3D is the same as the media out, so let's use the merge 3D. Okay, great. All right, now what we need is a camera. So what we can do is bring a, a camera and join the camera to the merge node. Okay. In our camera position. So you, these controls are a bit strange. I struggle with them, but I believe the middle mouse button moves us around or if you hold. Okay, if you use your Alt and the middle button on your mouse, you can rotate, okay? So let's bring this camera back a bit. So if we do that, we've got camera viewport over here. Okay, bring it down a bit. All right, so we have a camera in our 3D space and we have an image. What we want to do now is take this image and make it more 3D with our depth, depth map. Okay, so if we bring in the depth map now, we need to go to our media, pull it top here, find the depth map, which is this one. And we can close that again, rename this so we know what it is. Okay. Again, this is this is in 2D space, so we need to bring it into a 3D plane. So let's bring that into 3D. Well, actually, there's a different way to do this. What we can do is let's break this for a second. Click this image 3D and do control space on your keyboard and then you get a displacement 3D. Okay, so add this in and then you see it adds it to that. I'm gonna drag that to here. So far so good. Right now with the depth map we drag this into the displacement you can see it warped the image and what we can do is just adjust some properties here on the on the image i just want to rotate so we can see see a little bit of what's going on and first thing we can do is just add some wireframe so we can see some details but these subdivisions is going to give us more polygons to work with. So increase this up. Let's say increase it to 400. And let's bring the camera back a bit more. settings 
from your needs. Okay, what I noticed last time what I had to do is although this depth map gets pushed into the displacement to scale the image back like that, I had to also include a blur here, so I had to say blur and bring that into the displacement and then on the blur I just brought this up to as high as I could okay. so I still got that depth we rotate around so I still got that depth but now it's a much smoother image so in the camera we can we can zoom in like this now with that blur helping us smooth off the depth map okay so there you have it you have um, your camera and a depth map on your image okay so this is another way you can use the the overall depth map in your video editing software and then of course we can do some zooms from cool things here with the camera we can say if, if I wanted a keyframe where I am now and then go to the end and move the camera in rotate around it. and then let's see what happens when we when we play it okay i think i need to just key this back to zero when we play that so you can get a nice camera movement in your 3D environment. Alright. So that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, check out the links below in the description. As always, please support this channel by subscribing and clicking on the like button below.